Hi, I'm Isabella Moodler. For my scenario project, I re researched music in different cultures. Researching this topic, I realized that it was a very broad topic because there are so many different cultures that have their own musical styles. So I decided that I was going to pick two to put more of my attention and focus on. I chose Germany and Australia. I chose these two countries because they were far enough away from each other that they wouldn't have a musical influence on each other. I'm first going to start talking about the earliest peoples in Australia, the Australian Aboriginals, who have been living in Australia for over 40,000 years. So with on the Australian Aboriginal people, there are over 500 different tribes with their own languages and stories for some similar events. They celebrate and share these stories through different ceremonies that they participate in, in which they use music and dance to tell of what came before them in their tribe. One ceremony that I'm going to talk about specifically is the dreaming ceremony, which is also known as the creation ceremony. In this ceremony, the Australian people celebrate the ancestors that were responsible for creation, the rainbow serpent, and the wagina. These ancestors that they celebrate are important beings in their creation, and these are both humans and animals. The people believe that these beings are still in certain landforms around them today, and they honor these and grow their connection with the land around them through this ceremony. The ceremony also celebrates the rainbow serpent, and the rainbow serpent is believed to have given birth to the first people of Australia. The rainbow serpent is also responsible for storms and torrential rain, flat floods, and droughts. The rainbow serpent is seen through streams and rivers that come from the inside of the island and go out to the ocean around. The Rainbow Serpent is known for delivering vengeance to those who don't celebrate the traditions that are around it correctly. They also celebrate the Wajina in this ceremony, and the Wajina are believed to have given land to the people. They are what we would think of like gods in their culture. And they believe that the Wajina were on earth and then made their Wajina paintings, which are seen on the screen, and then became spirits and are still around them today. These paintings are retouched by artists that have studied the culture and worked to please and do right by the Wajina. Through music and dance, these stories are told, and they are passed down to those who will come after to tell to their own children and grandchildren. These ceremonies are very important in sharing the stories of the people who came before them. One instrument that most of these Aboriginal tribes have in common is the didgeridoo. The didgeridoo is an instrument shaped like a long hollow wooden tube. The didgeridoo is an instrument that is used by many of the Aboriginal tribes. The didgeridoo is very important in their culture because it is used in their ceremonies to make a droning sound. The didgeridoo is very difficult to play because it requires a very specific breathing called circle breathing where you inhale through your nose while exhaling through your mouth. There are also many different designs on the didgeridoo that are significant of certain meanings. Animals, dots, and lines all have different meanings on the didgeridoo. Whenever these designs are painted on the didgeridoo, they are used to tell different stories that are significant in the tribe. Then the didgeridoos are passed down through generations to tell the stories to the people who come after them. This didgeridoo that I have here was bought by my great-grandparents whenever they went to Australia. So on the didgeridoo you see snakes and there are also fish. So as you can see it's a very long instrument. Um, the snakes are represented, representative of a unpredictable character or resources like water and oil. So I am going to try to play the didgeridoo. It is very hard to play, and I am not very good at circle breathing at all, so it won't be a long sound. So here I go. So the didgeridoo is used to make a droning sound. 
so it is used in the background while other instruments similar to a drum are playing. While Australians use their music for storytelling, German classical composers use their music for a completely different purpose. I'm going to talk about the three famous German composers known as the 3B composers. These composers are Johannes Sebastian Bach, Ludwig von Beethoven, and Johannes Brahms, who are thought of to be the best of German composing. The first composer that I'm going to talk about is Johann Sebastian Bach. Bach lived from 1685 to 1750, and he was the first of the 3B composers. As a young child, Bach was a vocalist. Through his voice, he was able to get into a top music school for because he auditioned into a select choir. He also learned how to play the harpsichord, which is similar to the piano, but it has a smaller range in notes and it doesn't have as many dynamic options as the piano has. He then learned how to play the organ and became very good at playing the organ. And then he later learned how to play the viola, which is an instrument similar to the violin, but with a lower and deeper sound. He chose to play the viola because he wanted to be in the harmony of music. So Bach played many different types of music and was influenced by many types of music. One type of music that influenced him was church music. So throughout his career, he worked for many different churches through different periods of his life and learned different types of church's music. So he learned Lutheran church music and he also learned some French organ music. He also was influenced by orchestral music, specifically from a French orchestra that he heard play. He also was influenced by different Italian music that he heard, such as operas and concertos. From all of these different influences of music that he heard, he was able to take them and put it into his own work to create a unique music style. The second composer that I'm going to talk about is Ludwig von Beethoven, who lived from 1770 to 1827. He is the second of the three B composers. He introduced feeling to music. At the time that he was alive, the definition of music was the art of pleasing sounds. He incorporated the author's feelings and emotions into music. He bridged the span between the classical and Baroque periods of music. Beethoven played many instruments. As a young child, he learned how to play the piano and the violin and got quite good at playing those instruments. Then later, he also learned how to play the viola and the organ. It is also reported that he played the cello. I'm going to talk about one of the pieces Beethoven wrote, his third symphony, Eroica. This piece was written during the French Revolution, where the lower class French people, led by Napoleon Bonaparte, were revolting against the French upper class. So during this time, Beethoven thought that Napoleon was a really good person because he was helping these French people and decided to dedicate this symphony to him. Later, bon Napoleon Bonaparte showed who he really was and his want to be the dictator of France, and this angered Beethoven, and it's reported that he tore the dedication page of his symphony and then rededicated it to someone else. He then named his symphony Eroica, which means heroics. The third and final composer that I'm going to talk about is Johannes Brahms. Johannes Brahms lived from 1833 to 1897. His position in the Three Bs is debated, as there were a lot of other composers between him and Beethoven who also could have been considered a part of the Three B composers. Brahms only played the piano. He started playing the piano when he was very young, and that was the only instrument he ever played. But he did write music for other instruments. He wrote symphonies, four in total. He wrote choral music, piano music, and overall over 200 different songs. One of Brahms' influences was Eduard Rimani. 
Eduard was a Jewish-Hungarian musician who taught Brahms how to play Roma music. Roma music is a Hungary dance music. He also, Brahms also learned per, different performance skills from performing to Eduard. Brahms was also close with Robert and Clara Schumann, who really got him interested in performing and playing specifically piano music, as Robert and Clara were both pianists. After Robert died, Brahms was still very close with Clara, and then after Clara died, there was a definite change in Brahms' music style, as you can see the different emotions that he was feeling at the time. Now I'm going to talk about how these different styles and importances of different elements in music all come together to make music important. So I looked up the definition of music, and music is defined as vocal or instrumental sounds combined in such a way to produce beauty of form, harmony, and expression of emotion. For me, I personally think that music helps to tell the stories of what has happened to certain people. It also shows the emotions of the person who writes the music, and it also can be used to help people who are experiencing similar emotions to the author to get through whatever they're going through. So, looking at music, I looked at different elements of music, and then I wrote some music. So I wanted to make my music representative of the year 2020. And in order to make it representative of the year 2020, I had to use different elements that were used by German composers in them writing classical music. So for example, major and minor keys. Um, a major key is a more positively sounding key, and that can be used to make the music sound happier or lighter. So I used this in the beginning and end of the music that I wrote, and in the beginning it is used to represent what time was like before COVID, and at the end it is used to represent how everything came back around in a full circle and it brought us back to where we were before, just slightly different. Another technique that I used was speed or beats per minute. So in the beginning and end there's a little bit of a quicker speed, but in the middle there's a slower speed that makes it sound more calm or sad or tired. I also used note length, so at the beginning, you, whenever I show the music to you, you'll see shorter and smaller notes, which makes the music faster paced, and toward the middle of the song, and the end of song, the song, there are longer notes that help slow down the music and make it seem like less is going on. I also use these techniques to help represent different emotions and help people relate to how people would have been feeling during this time. So some of the musical elements that I used in my piece were items such as dynamics. So mezzo piano, crescendos, forte, and decrescendos into a mezzo forte. I used these to cue the instrumentalists to dynamic changes to help represent the reason for my song, so it building at the beginning and then slowing down and being quieter. So I also used elements to make it faster and slower, so items like metronome marking, so beats per minute, so it's faster at the beginning, or slower in the middle. I also used elements like faster notes in all of the parts at the beginning. So the violin, the cello, the piano, and the viola all have faster notes in the beginning part of the song. These notes are 16th notes, so they make the music sound a lot faster. Toward the middle of the song, there are a lot of whole notes and dotted half notes and also rests. So this makes the music sound more calm and more connected and slower. At the end, there it speeds back up a little bit, but then toward the end it slows down until it ends on one unison note, so an uh, idea of togetherness. At the beginning, the violin has the melody, and that melody is faster and more upbeat, 
In the middle, the cello has the melody because of its lower sounds that can be more representative of the sad times and the loss that we went through during COVID. And then also at the end, I put the viola having the melody. So it is completely different from what it was like in the beginning. So it had a little bit of a change from the original melody, but still was its own unique melody. And then at the end, it all ended as one collective note. I want to thank all the people that helped me on this project, especially the people who played the music for me. I would like to thank the violinist, Miss Sarah Miller, um, the cellist, Ophelia Crano, and the pianist, Miss Claire Barker. I also want to thank Miss Susan Dinger, who helps me in writing the music. The link to listen to the music is in the description below. Thank you for watching my 2020-21 Scenario Showcase project. I hope you learned something new.